Well, good evening, everybody. How are we doing? We'll get ready. Everyone's a talking. Let's get ready. I don't think I'm on yet, but it's all right. Let's get ready. Are we ready to start? <laughs> Here we go. I'm on. Okay. Praise the Lord. Does anybody have a praise report, something good God's done for you? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> anybody? Something good God has done for you? Your back is feeling better, Carol? Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God is good. What's that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm getting so spoiled. Trish is being so... The Lord put it on her heart to do some things for me as her pastor. And my word, I'm just blessed. And on this hot day, she went out and detailed my car. And I said, and, and I had Troy's automotive do it. I said, you did just as well as he did. Well, it's absolutely magnificent. Oh, man. I think she did better, probably. I agree. So bless her heart. She says, she did my windows. She did my bathroom. I mean, I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. <laughs> she had all that energy she has. It's awesome. <laughs> Anybody else? Praise report. Tim. Thank you, Pastor John. Yeah, some, oh, about a month ago, having some challenges with my uh, family, uh, my siblings and stuff, but kind of missed it at first, but then the Lord showed me how to recover and restore by, you know, building up, you know, trust again and, and you know, uh, communicating properly to build a, a, a you know, honorable problem solving and the results of, you know, restoring that relationship with my second oldest sister, which she was so loving and kind to me as a child, you know, growing up when I was this uh, rebellious teenager, she would love me and hug me. And so God just really uh, helped me and showed me, you know, just to develop that kind of love in me. And I believe it's being restored with my older sister. And Amen. so even though she's, she, you know, we were raised Catholic. She wouldn't consider herself saying that she's like born again. But, you know, I'm just loving her and learning that I don't need to preach to anybody. I need to live the life ahead of them. And the Holy Spirit is showing me how to do that. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Yes, Kathy. Went to the state fair yesterday with uh, clients, none of us clients. Um, we walked around quite a bit, and uh, in the afternoon, then we started eating dinner, and everything was, I didn't realize that everything was so expensive. <laughs> Pop was $7, and um, the rest of it was expensive too. But I, like I said, I enjoyed myself. I can agree with, Linda Schroger and I and Harry Cramp went on Monday, and yeah, a lemonade was $7, I saw that. A pineapple slushy, which I, it looked like it was probably in a, in, a, in a pineapple inside of it, went $20 for a pineapple slushy. I thought, who in the world's gonna buy that? For a hamburger. I didn't, we didn't look, I don't know, did you notice, Linda? So we waited till after the fair, and we went to Tommy's restaurant. <laughs> it was and, good. <laughs> and what I was going to order was not what the price was on the menu. It was $3 less. Amen. That's right. It was a special. Yes. Amen. And Harry, he spends most of his money on all the other residents at 
um, Spring Creek home. He has things for everybody. We had to, and we had to go to Donovan to the Dollar General. If you ever need to go to Dollar General and you're on that way, it's a beautiful Dollar General. It has, it has a lot more stuff, and it's clean and neat and very nice, very impressive. So we, we enjoyed that, and we went to Walmart, we went to Russ's, and Harry doesn't get out, so he loves going. <laughs> so, and his, he called his brother Harold the next day. I went over to Harold, oh yeah, Harry's already ca called me. <laughs> so he had a good time. He had a very good time. Yes, he did, yes he did. Um, just don't get too settled in those seats that you're in because we will be moving you all when the youth get here, okay? I <laughs> just want you to know it. They're coming in if they have football practice, so it's going to be a little late, all right? So they'll be here pretty soon. So let's just have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for all these wonderful praise reports. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for the anointing of the Spirit of God tonight. Thank you, Lord, that... You, you love, love it when all ages, generations are together and we love each other with the love of God. And we just thank you, Lord, for, for what you want to be said and done tonight. And we just thank you for the anointing of the Spirit of God. And we just receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, why don't we do that? <laughs> I'll give my testimony. <laughs> if you got one. Story for another day. Okay. <laughs> well, we can improvise, right? That's right, they made special music just for the youth. All righty. Instant in, season and out. My glasses are shedding. Maybe it's time to get another dollar pair of reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Little black things are falling off of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody have a prayer request tonight? Yes, Katie. For what? My back. You're back, okay. Anybody else? I was hoping we'd have a whole bunch of prayer requests. <laughs> Not really. We're happy when we don't have a whole bunch. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, Brenda. What is her name? Mary Tejan. And she had what what she have? Sorry. Bell replacement. Bell replacement, okay. Left lung? Yeah, she had a Okay. Just left. left lung. Okay, I'll just write that there. Pastor, did you have one? No, I just oh, you're just telling me, okay. Anybody else? Oh, let me get the microphone for you. Where did I put it? Right here. brother-in-law, my twin sister's husband, David, that had the fall and cracked his skull, went back to work Monday. And he's, Praise he's the Lord. doing very well. Awesome. Praise God. Okay. Anybody else? One last chance. Prayer, prayer requests? Anybody? Okay. Well, I'll pray for Mary, and then we'll come back and lay hands on Katie. Okay. Father, we just thank you for Mary Tejan, and we just thank you, Lord, for 
She'll recover from that valve replacement surgery. We just thank you, Lord. Every organ, every tissue of her body functions to perfection, which you created to function. And we just speak to her body. And we call you healthy and whole and recovering, Father. And, and we just, the strength of God in her, we thank you for it. And we, you are the strength of her heart. Just touch her, Father God. And we just thank you for leading, guiding, directing the doctors, nurses, and everyone involved. We thank you for it. Thank you for what you're doing in her. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Can you tell, can you, I don't know if Carol can reach or maybe Don can reach where your back is kind of. Oh, I, I, I have something else. It's over here. Okay. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We take authority over scoliosis. We take, and we just thank you for this back. You straighten the backs. They're about bowed down. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for touching her with your healing power flowing through her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, the healing anointing. We thank you for it. You sent your word and you healed her and we just thank you and we receive all that you have for her. Thank you for it right now. Do a work in her, Father God. Thank you. Do a work in that back. She's able to, to, to bend. She's able to move. She's able to sit. She's able to lay down. Do all those things without any pain or discomfort. We just thank you for what you're doing in her. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Okay, well, we're waiting for the kids. So we'll, if you would like to give tonight, you can get an offering envelope from the chair in front of you. Make your checks out to Living Faith Fellowship Church, LFFC. And our, um, let's see, we have one more time to give to Samaritan's Purse for the Ukraine. That's today. So, And then starting mo Sunday, we will be giving to Fleming Ministries for the month of September. So, And thank you for giving Byron August a really good offering. We appreciate that. And it was a blessing to have him here. Amen. Yeah, I'm going to pray. And I'm not going to sing. Is that what you asked me? Oh. <laughs> um, I am going to explain that a little bit, that we got these new envelopes, and we inadvertently left a few phrases out of the middle of the confession. So we are going to get some new envelopes pretty soon, but it might be just a little bit until we do that. So... Oh, good, we got it on the screen. Good, Kathy did that, thank you very much. So that's got the full thing on it. If you have an old one, it's got it on there too. So we will get that changed, but we will do that. So let's have a word of prayer and then we'll do our confession. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to give. And we just thank you, Lord, that it's a privilege to be able to give to you. And we thank you for your blessings every day. Help us never to take that for granted, but to know that we are blessed, our country is blessed, and we just continue to thank you for all that you're doing for us, Lord. And we thank you for harv our harvest. In, in the natural, it's going to be harvest time soon. Well, it's harvest time every day when you give into the kingdom of God. And we thank you for it. And we receive our harvest for each person here and for Living Faith Fellowship Church. We thank you every bill is paid, every need is met. We just thank you for it, and we just give you the glory, honor, and praise for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's just say our confession together. As I tithe and give offerings, I'm believing you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotions, sales and commissions, estates and inheritances, interests and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, 
gifts and surprises. Bills decreased, bills paid off. Blessings and increase, and greater victories in the midst of greater odds. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my needs. And I may have more than enough to give to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I just saw the van pull up, so praise the Lord. <laughs> Can you, you have a microphone there? Yes, I was just going to say thanks for dealing with me for eight years now. <laughs> do, I, do I deserve a medal? <laughs> long suffering, long suffering. <laughs> okay, we'll have to do. James, we've seen such growth in you. That's what's rewarding as a pastor, to see growth. And uh, we have seen that in you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they can come up front. We don't want them in the back. <laughs>
Thank you, Lord. Jesus is coming back. We thank you, Father. We're excited about what you're doing, Father God. We're excited that we're part of it. We're living this right now. We're living this right out, right now that Jesus is coming back. And we thank you for what you want to do through us, that you help us to be a minister to others, help us to carry the gospel wherever we go, Father. We carry the good news of Jesus Christ. And we love you, we praise you, we bless you tonight. We thank you for your presence tonight. Thank you for all that you want to be said and done. We just receive the anointing of God and we just thank you for it and give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, it's good to have everybody is here now. So we did take up the offering earlier. So if you have offering, see Don Weist on your way out. Make sure he gets that. Or if the youth, you can get sure the youth get their offering if they have any. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to, how many kids do we have? I want to see one, two, three, four, five. I wanted to make sure we had, we don't have six so somebody's going to have to be pretend to be a kid tonight. Lois can pretend to be a kid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. <laughs> so, we, so in other words, we've got six groups. So I'm going to have five kids, and then some of you just have to be the, be the adults, okay? But I'm gonna, so I'm going to start with the kids first, and then I'm going to come back to the rest of you. But you see where I put the signs at, so that's where you're going to sit, okay? So we're going to start over here with Noah. One, remember your number. Less is two, okay, three, Riley four, Levi five. Then we'll come back six, <laughs> seven, oh, not, not seven, <laughs> one, <laughs> Remember your number. Royce is two, Jane is three, Trish is four, um, Brenda's five, Lori six. Darlene's one, uh, Linda's two, Dawn is three, now we'll have to see how this works. Do you want to just stay back there, Carol? We won't, okay. So three, so Katie's four. Are the Weasts gonna help? Okay, Kathy's five. Um, James, you're, are you helping? Are I don't know what you want me to do. Well, you get a number first. <laughs> six, you're six. Pastor Patsy, are you, okay. Well, we go back to one then. Donna's one, Sharon's two, Tim is three, Kathy is four, Arlette's five, and you are six, Linda. Right. So get into your designated rows. And it should be enough to be all be fit in one row. Oh, Tim, I need you as my helper, so I may not be able to let you do in, what number were you? Okay, just, just come up here, I think I'm gonna need you. Okay, we'll try to go as quick as can, because I know we got kind of a late start. 
Okay. Yeah, can't control that. I do understand. I used to go to football practice. I understand too. Do I remember? Yeah. Yes. Noah, can you please sit up? Thank you. I know you're tired. Okay. All right. Everybody, okay. Now, let me read a scripture to you. First of all, the rule is, if I'm talking, no one else is to be talking. <laughs> so, I don't have any balloons to pop, that's what we do at VBS, but if the person up here is talking, no one else is supposed to talk. So even the adults, <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. Yes, James. Give them a negative point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jane. We're missing somebody. Um, are you three? Yeah, because I, I took Tim out. So do we have, that's why everyone else has four. So there's nobody with more. So you'll just have, you guys will have to just muddle through with three. <laughs> but when we're done. But when we're done, okay, I'll tell you this. When I'm done with my activity, Tim can go sit with you because I don't know if you guys are going to use the, I don't know if Lois and Paul or if Royce will use the numbers or not, but I'm using them. So that's, I didn't, do need a helper, okay? So let's be the scripture here. Our, our, I, um, my, I just made a title because I had to give it to Sharon, Live by Faith. But we're talking about God, God's faithfulness. We're also talking about faith in God and that we need to be faithful to God. If we have faith, we're going to be faithful. And Royce has a good teaching on that. He, he was teaching me yesterday. <laughs> it was good. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Contemporary English version says, but we live by faith, not by what we see. Isn't that good? And the New International Reader's Version says, we live by believing, not by seeing. Okay, so we're literally going to have a little um, exercise in this. I, what we're going to do is I have a blindfold. And Tim, you're going to be the candy guy. So, and you're also going to help me make sure no one falls and trips and stuff too. But we're going to start out with number one. And you, just, you have to decide who in your group is going to be blindfolded. And then either one person or all of you can do it together. I'm going to give you the mic. You have to start them right here. And you have to get them through this obstacle course over to sit down on that finish line chair. So if they hit something or trip over something, it's your fault because you didn't tell them. Right? But Tim and I are going to be there and we're going to be watching to make sure they don't actually get hurt. Okay? So, so, and so all the groups need to decide who's going to be the blind, blind person and who's going to be the one that, that tells the instructions or you all can do it together. I don't care. And some of you, if you are farther back and you want to come up closer, you can do that too. I'll let you do that. But we're going to start with number one. So who is going to be the blind person? Noah, do you want to do that? Okay. You're just not feeling good. Can we pray for you? Father, we just thank you for Noah. We touch him with the healing power of God. Just touch that headache. It has to leave in Jesus' name. Just touch him. We sent your word and you healed him. Just thank you for it. Pain has to be gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blindfold Paul. Blindfold Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the nose part, That's and you got two point. bands that go over your head. And you have to come over to this chair, Paul. Let me get you over here. To the, you can touch that chair. Now, how do we guide him? You have to tell him. I don't know. You have to tell him by voice command how he gets over to that finish line. So you have to say, walk forward three steps, take a left, oh. things like that. Y point. Yeah, you can't, can't, can't really point. point. Yes, you follow where I point. <laughs> okay. All right, Paul. Take two steps forward. Left face. Left face. Left. Right. 
Right, right face. I'm sorry. <laughs> Say what? Right face, right face. I'm sorry. Three steps forward. Now, does he have to go a certain way? You get him out of your way just to get to that chair. I don't care how you do it. Left face. Three steps forward. have to go around all of the things? Two more steps forward. Right face. Four steps forward. Um, hmm. Go to the right just about a half a step. To the right, to the right, turn to the right, yes. Oh, no, 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 to the right, the other right. The, uh, goes one step forward. That's it, you're done. You can sit down. Woohoo! Woohoo! That's not very easy, is it? That's pretty difficult. All four of the group gets a piece of candy, okay? All right, everyone gets a piece of candy. All right. Yay. So give it to number two, whoever's going to be blinded. Thank you. Les, good. Good job. Come over here, Les, before you put it on. Start right here. Okay. There you go, Royce. Yes. Yes, put You ready? Okay, step, 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 turn right, step, 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 right, step, left, left, stick your foot out. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't think about timing them. Okay. You're the blind. Oh. Brandon's going to get blindfolded. Stand over here by the chair. And put the blindfold on right, by the, right behind the chair. Okay, and Jane's going to lead you, okay? Okay. I heard, can I say this real quick? I heard a joke, now that's not very good, but two blind, two blind guys were fighting and, and a guy yelled out, one of you has a knife. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad, I know, that's bad. <laughs> All right, Brandon, turn to your left. All right, good job. Take three steps. And one more step. Turn to your right, take five steps. Okay, take two more steps. Turn to your left, three steps. Ooh, ooh, I think you found, can you turn around and sit down, sit down. Oh, 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 oh move, there you go. <laughs> Um, number four. Who's the blind person? Riley? Uh, come on and grab a hold of the chair, then you can put your blindfold on. All righty. Trisha's the director? Yeah. All right. What did you say? Yeah. I mean, I did say this. Take 
three steps forward. I like your shoes. <laughs> They're sharks. <laughs> All right. Uh, take another three steps forward. Forward this way? Yeah. All right. Well, well, well <laughs> that way. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Sure. All right. All right. Turn, stop. Turn this way. Forward. Forward. Oh. <laughs> I got it. He did it. <laughs> All right. Good job. Number five. <laughs> Takes a little bit, doesn't it, to do that? Wow. Okay, you can touch the chair before you put it on. Just be, be behind the chair. Oh, behind? Yeah, be behind it. <laughs> Kathy's doing it. Six steps forward. Okay, turn to your right. I'm, I'm right, that's challenged. Right, turn to your right. Take three steps. Okay, now take, turn to your left. Two steps. Now turn to your right. Four steps. <coughs> You're there. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Number six. I'll take that. Thank you. Come here. He wants it in Spanish. I was oh, kidding. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> We're going to try. You're going to give it to him in Spanish. I want you to do it in Spanish. <laughs> this, this is funny. I am out. Should I spin around a few times? All right. Where are we okay, going? Okay. Let's do that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. I think it's this way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dos. Tres. Tres pesados. Adelante. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do. Más, más, dos, tres. Uh, voltea derecho, derecho, derecho. Didn't quite get that last one. <laughs> <laughs> Seguir adelante, adelante. Tres, tres. Oh, oh. Voltea, voltea. Uh, vol okay, okay. Ahora sí, adelante, uh, voltea, I'm like scared derecho, right now. derecho is right. Right, okay, cool. Adelante, cuatro, oh, well, you changed the chair. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to tell him. <laughs> Your son did that. <laughs> Dude, I knew Royce was beside me. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. Tim, can you help me take all this stuff and kind of move it against the wall? Thank you. All right. Well, what would you think of that game? That, that, was, that was kind of fun, wasn't it? Good job. Give yourselves a hand. Yay. But think about that. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing. Sometimes it's easier. Sometimes you're really in tune and you're going with what they tell you to do. Sometimes you don't quite interpret it completely the right way, right? Just a little bit off. Sometimes and you, it's old yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so we're developing spiritually. And I think it's a good analogy how we're developing spiritually and how we fine tune. Sometimes it's not as easy as other things to hear the voice of the Spirit. And sometimes we bump into something too. <laughs> But then we eventually get there. If you just be faithful and listen to the voice of the Holy Ghost, you'll get there. And it doesn't matter if you bump into something once in a while. That means you might make a mistake or something. But God will pick you back up and help you. And nobody fell, nobody got hurt. 
<laughs> okay, who's going next, Lois or Royce? Actually, we're going together. Oh, cool. Well, you both need the mics then? I'll give you want this one? Well, you can have this one. You sure? Okay. Okay. Yes, you can. Well, come Does anyone remember what uh, Pastor Hagen was told to go do for his, uh, God's people? Teach them what? Faith. faith, that's right. So we're going to talk about faith tonight, which is awesome. Um, such an important topic. And so we're going to try to tag team this together, and we've not done this in person. So, so just over the phone. Yes. So, so, so I better pray first. So bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, just thank you, Lord, how awesome and amazing you are. I thank you, Father, what a wonderful, beautiful evening to, to be with your people. I thank you, Father God, uh, that we get to talk about such a, a glorious, beautiful, wonderful subject uh, to talk about faith, but also faithfulness, Lord. I thank you, Father God. You are faithful. You are so good. You're so amazing. I thank you, Father God, for calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And Holy Spirit, we just invite you here tonight to lead and guide and direct us here this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, so um, Lois is awesome because she's really good at illustration. I'm more the, the nerdy part of things. So you get the nerdy part, and you get the cool illustration part. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, was, uh, when I was uh, trying to think about what to talk about, um, I wanted to talk about faith, and, and Pastor John thought that was a good topic to talk about. And so I was thinking, why did that come up in my spirit? Why did that come in my heart? Probably because, again, I always remember Brother Hagen talking about he was sent to go teach my people faith. We're supposed to walk by faith. We're supposed to live by faith. It's so important. But God put this in my heart. And it was interesting that um, Myron Argus come and talk a little bit about faith. I thought it was perfect. The, the analogy of the firecracker, I just love that. It was really good. And, and God put in my heart that faith is a conductor of God's power. Okay, so when we think of that, Faith is a conductor of God's power. So wherever we put our faith towards something, it attracts God's power, okay? So I want you to get that mindset because uh, we're, we're going to talk about a, a few instances in the Bible. But, um, you know, but where does that power come from? It comes from inside of us. It comes from God, but, but the power is inside of us. In fact, Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him who is able to exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that is at work in us. So sometimes we forget that power is inside of us. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. That same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. And in fact, it talks about how God, it was, it, one translation said there was an exertion of force that God used. If God had to use exertion or work towards raising Christ from the dead, all the way to the highest heights, that's probably the greatest dis display of power ever known. And that's inside of you. So sometimes we walk around where we think we're feeble and quiet and we don't, you know, we're nothing. But you know what? With God, all things are possible. So we need to keep that in mind that, you know what? With God, we can do all things, okay? And so, um, so I wanted to go into a couple of things um, about uh, faith first and then go into a couple stories. So Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so when we think of that, we, you know, I used to think, uh, you know, I, used to, I, I just had a wrong um, vision of what faith is. But so faith is the substance of things hoped for. What is that substance? What is the evidence of things not seen? So I looked up in the Greek concordance, and it says substance is the support, the assurance, the confidence the it, it's concretely and so when we think of support i think of supporting evidence coming from a legal perspective we think of the supporting evidence so when you think of like a, a, a someone committing a crime well, what's the supporting evidence well they had a gun they had a mask on they like to talk about robbing banks right so we have that analogy in our head that that that's supporting evidence so we're supposed to look at what are we believing for and how are we acting towards that that is that substance Evidence is proof or conviction. So what is the proof? So if you're believing something, I should be able to tell by the way you are what you're believing for, by the, what you're doing. 
So if you're believing for healing and you go around talking that you're sick all the time, I'm going to say that's probably not the substance of the proof that you should be giving, right? So, and, and we know that faith begins where the will of God is known. We've heard that before. Um, but I, you know, if we look at it, think of faith, faith is the measure of, of trust in our God, right? Our, the measure of faith that we have about something is the measure of trust that we have in God about something, okay? And so, um, so I'm going to give a couple of stories, and, and, and Lois is going to help me with the illustration with this. And we're just going to break these down. So I'll, I'll give you the scriptures real quick. I'm trying to hurry, so forgive me. That's why I'm going super rapid. So Matthew uh, chapter 8 uh, we're talking about the, the faith is the centurion soldier. Okay, so Romans cha- uh, uh, Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. And it says, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at a home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, no, I do not deserve for you to come under my roof. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority. And he kind of goes on to explain why he believed that. But notice he made that statement of what he believed. And he walked by it. Then Jesus said to the centurion, looking further down, he said, Jesus said to the centurion, go, let it be done just as you believed it would. He didn't say just he would be healed. He said it would be done exactly how you believed it would be. All right, I need Brandon. Come here. We're going to use some of the youth and ch- crew g- group. Brandon, what is this object right here? Folding it's a folding chair. What do you think of when you sit on a chair? You don't. You really don't. <laughs> you don't think. You just plop down. Yep. Is this the most comfortable chair ever? Doesn't look like it. If, if, if you had your druthers, you get to pick a chair, what would you pick? The nicest chair in the world, I guess. A recliner, so you can put your feet up, tip your head back, really relax. Okay. Why do you think that chair will stand up and let you sit on it? It's built like that. It's built like that? So in other words, in actuality, you have faith that chair is going to hold you. <laughs> okay. So what I'm trying to point out to you, if I tell you to sit down in that chair, you have no problem doing it. You have a lot of confidence that chair is going to hold you. Yep. Okay. The centurion had confidence when he said, just say the word and my servant will be healed. So if I say the word, sit on the chair. I'll sit on the chair. (laughs) And it's still holding him. (laughs) Do you understand why the centurion had such faith? Because he knew if he give a command, it was done. If it wasn't done, the guys were punished. So he knew once he gave a command, it happened, and that's why he came to Jesus with that kind of faith. <laughs> so the next, the next story we're going to tell about is the woman with the issue of blood. Um, we're going to look at uh, Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 34, and you don't have to look it up because I'm trying to do super speed, okay? So... Um, so the woman with the issue of blood, she had this issue of blood. And as many of you know, back then, if you had an issue of blood, you were considered unclean. And what did you have to do when you went out in public? Declare. Yeah, declare that I'm unclean, I'm unclean, right? Stay away from me. And so she didn't do that, right? So this, I'm, I'm going to pick up in verse 27. It says, after hearing about Jesus, she came up in the crowd behind him and touched his cloak. And this is from the NASB, okay? She said, For she had been saying to herself, if I touch his garments, I will get well. For she had been saying to herself. You know, it almost sounds like she's been saying that either in her mind, saying that out loud. She's been thinking about this, right? She's been thinking, okay? And so, if I just touch his garments, I will get well. So, we know what happens. Jesus, she touches his garment, 
And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power from him had, had, gone, had gone out, turned to the crowd and asked, who touched me? So remember I said faith is a, is a conductor of God's power, right? So Jesus at this moment did not know who had touched him, okay? I think we all could agree on that. I believe the Holy Spirit actually revealed it to him because further on it talks about how um, uh, it says, okay, he asked who touched me, and they're like, well, there's all kinds of people touching you, pressing against you. How can you say someone's touched you? But then the woman, fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. So she, in another translation, it says she, be, she became found out. And, and I think Jesus is the one figured out through the work of the Holy Spirit. Here's the thing. Jesus, although was God, he operated as a man anointed with the Holy Spirit, just like we operate, right? And so if you think about it, you know, we're made in the image of God, right? And how did God create the world? His words, right? He spoke it, right? He spoke it into existence. He spoke his word. So did God have faith in his own word? Right. He had faith. That's right. That's right. And so that's why we're supposed to walk by faith. And so God has given who the authority, who, who's he given the authority to, to walk with that kind of faith? Us. So if we speak God's word, it happens just like our heavenly father. We're copying the father. Jesus was the ultimate example. He was the ultimate example because he was, he was man acting under the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, how we're supposed to act, right? So that's, that's our example. So we, we are also supposed to do that. And here I lost my place, just a second. <laughs> so we're also supposed to do that. So Jesus, seeing that, um, uh, you know, sensing that the power had gone out of him, uh, he figures it out. She comes to him, tells him the truth. And Jesus said, um, I made you well, right? No, he said, your faith, your faith, because your faith is a conductor of God's power. It flowed out of him. So when people say, this is what I have a problem with. Sometimes people say, well, uh, if it be thy will. There's some things we're supposed to ask. What is God's will? Hey, Lord, do you want us to go to Dairy Queen or the Mexican restaurant, right? That's, that, you know, that's okay to ask, what is your will, right? But here's the thing. When it comes to things like healing, Jesus healed them all. The only people he had trouble healing is when he went back to his hometown. It said they, had, they were in unbelief, right? They did not have faith. And he only performed a few small miracles there. So it was the level of faith at which Jesus was able to heal or perform miracles, right? And so, again, we see that. So he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. And actually, many translations says made you whole, which is really interesting. So she was seeking after Jesus, and she was made whole. Go in peace and be cured of your disease, okay? Okay. This illustration basically falls down to the fact of the story itself. I always think of this story as a real example how to practice your faith. Because we're in situations and we're looking at them. She had this for 12 years. 12 years this woman had been bleeding. She'd been seeing doctors. She'd done everything in the natural that she could do. So all of a sudden, I'm sure her friends which he was saying she had to proclaim when she went out, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. So if she talked to anybody, they almost had to come to her house because she could be arrested for being in public without yelling that. So I'm sure people were coming by and saying, hey, we heard about Jesus, we heard about Jesus. First thing we got to do is hear the word. Where do we get the word? The Bible. Best place to get the word of God. And now I'm going to ask you, can you hear the Bible out of Royce's machine. Not a single word came out of that machine. So we actually need to read the word out loud to ourselves, okay? As well as we're starting to grow this faith in us. You need to find the promise. She had the thought. I'm sure first it was a thought. If I can get near him, I can get healed. And then Bingo, if I can touch the hem of his garment. And I was thinking about, I had heard once something that was special about the hem of the garment. But I was thinking, what had her attitude become about herself? She probably thought pretty low of herself. Can you imagine going out for 12 years going, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. I mean, I would not think your attitude about yourself would be too high at that point. 
Because I would think, boy, if I could touch just his shoulder or his waist, it'd be so much easier in a crowd. But I'm going to get down and touch the hem of his garment. And I went, whoa, think about that, the hem of the garment. It's not like it's up here. It's not like you can bump into him, the hem of his garment. But it says in the Bible, she kept saying, if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be whole. Okay? And she said it, and she said it. And then came that brave moment when Jesus was in town and she heard it. And so she goes out, not proclaiming anymore, I'm unclean. Her objective is, I'm going to get to Jesus. I'm going to touch the hem of that garment. I'm going to be made whole. What I liked about it, and they had never thought about it, the Bible said virtue came out of him. The anointing came out of him. He knew when that anointing left. And I'm thinking, whoa, we want to know. The pastor was teaching about the anointing. And God had given me for faith Faith is the Father's anointing in the hour of our need. And I thought, oh my goodness, the anointing is what we need. And where do we get the anointing? We get it from the Word and the Holy Ghost. And I thought, whoa, you know, here she is out there in public when she's not supposed to be. She's touching the hem of his garment. And all of a sudden he says, who touched me? Power left me. The anointing left me. The virtue left me. Now, everybody's touching him, and the disciples are going, oh, 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 everybody's touching you. And he goes, no, virtue went out of me. So she then tells her story and what she was believing. And for her accomplishment, your faith has made you whole. Amen. Praise God. So the next uh, story, and actually I want to in contrast of, of two stories, um, First of all, with Peter walking on the water and then the, the Syrophoenician or the Canaanite woman whose daughter was healed. So when you think about it, how am I doing on time? Doing okay? Okay. So when you think about it, when Peter went to walk on the water, they see Jesus walking on the water. They get scared. They think it's a ghost. And they realize it's the master. And then um, he says, Lord, if, you know, basically tell me to come on the water and I'll come. So he starts to walk on the water, right? And so I want you to see this contrast that Peter did not speak words of faith. I want you to think about it. If you look at that, it really weren't words of faith. And so he got out on the water, and he saw the wind. He got scared and began to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Ye of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? But you know what's interesting about that? Although he had little faith, Jesus still rescued him. Isn't that an amazing story that even if we are down on ourselves, we have little faith, right? Faith of a mustard seed is still enough. It's still enough for God to rescue us. It's still enough for God to move, right? So start somewhere. Have faith, you know, but, but change the way you say things. Because he never said, I'm walking on the water, I'm walking on the water, you know. He, he didn't say that. He, he saw, he got his eyes off of Jesus, and he got it on the circumstance right? That's what happened. Now, I want to co contrast that kind of faith, even though Jesus still rescued him. I want you to know that. So we have the faith of mustard seed, little faith. He still rescues us. Thank you, Lord. Oh, but contrast that with um, the Canaanite woman. So I'm going to, okay, I'm going to pick up here in Matthew chapter 15, verse 22. It says, a Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him crying, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. So she's not really quite, you know, speaking faith words just yet, right? But she, it, my daughter's demon-possessed and suffering terribly, but she knows where to go to. She knows the source of where to go to, right? And Jesus did not answer her words, so he doesn't even say anything to her. So that his disciples came to him and urged him, saying, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. And he said, this is what he tells her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Now, we know Jesus was called to the Jews, right? We do know that. But he made this statement. But I want to know, why didn't he make this statement to the Roman centurion? Because he, he instantly saw the faith of the Roman centurion, right? He's like, oh, you don't even have to come to my house. Just say the word and it's done. Boom, right there. Already taken care of, right? Jesus, I think, was drawing out her, trying to figure her words, drawing out her words of faith. Because watch how it changes, okay? 
Send, so send her away, or sorry, he says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Now, people could say, well, well it, it, it wasn't Jesus' will to heal. Yes, it's God's will to heal. Watch the situation change. Then the woman knelt down before him, Lord, help me. So again, not, I mean, she's going to the right source, but I'm not hearing words of faith, right? Words of faith call those things be not as though they are, right? So, so he says, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. This is her reply. Look what happens when she changes her words. Yes, it is, Lord. <laughs> yes, it is, Lord. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted, and, your daughter, and her daughter was healed at that moment. You see that change of circumstance? We, we notice when people speak words of faith in front of Jesus, things happen immediately. Instant change. Otherwise, if we get our eyes off of Jesus and we get on the circumstance, we can begin to sink like Peter, but Jesus still rescued him. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Leslie, come up here. Leslie, what do I have here? What is that? Two dollar bills, hope they're not counterfeit. Oh, thank you. Your trust in me is so rewarding. <laughs> Do you know that money has been known as currency? Yes. Okay. If you wanted to buy something with those $2, what would you do? I'd go to the store. Would you look at prices of stuff that you were interested in? I'd look at whatever's $2. <laughs> okay. So in other words, it in, in my store today, everything's $2, okay? Come, I've got three items over here. One is a Hershey's bar. One is a Kit Kat. And one is a Starburst. Okay, what do you desire? Starburst. Say that again. Starburst. Why Starburst? I don't know. You don't like the others? No, Starbursts are just better. It's better, okay. So in my, in my, in my store, what are you going to have to do to get that Starburst? Using my money. Ooh, so you're going to hand me the currency, okay? And you're going to get the Starburst. You may have that. You may sit down. The point of this story is our faith is the currency for what we want. We go to the Bible, we find the scripture. If you're looking for healing, you get the healing scriptures. If you're looking for finances, you get financial scriptures. If you're looking for a house, you get house scriptures. If you're looking for a car, you look for car scriptures. You look for what you need in the Bible, okay? The currency is our faith. That's how we reach out so that we can get it. What I didn't say to him was, if he wanted it, he was going to have to take it out of my hand. Okay? That's the same way. Once we find that scripture, once we believe with confidence that what God says he will do, then we just reach out and take it. We become like those little kids when they grab their favorite toy and we go, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. And that's what we need to do with whatever the Bible tell you. It's mine, it's mine. I am righteous. I am born again. I am healed. We need to be grabbing those scriptures and just holding on to them tight and not letting them go until we see them manifest in our life. And we need to keep saying it and keep saying it and praising God for it and thanking him every day for that very thing you're believing. And just like that currency or the current he's talking about, that's our way to get what God promised and bring it to the natural. So again, faith, um, you know, faith is such an important part of, of our lives. And, you know, um, faith is, again, the, the substance of things hoped for. But, you know, it's, we, we get faith by, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? When we talked about that earlier, and faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing it over and over and over. And if you think about it, 
when Jesus changed, the, or when God, sorry, not Jesus, when God changed the name of Abram to Abraham, he was actually hearing God's word over and over and over. He was hearing God's word speaking over and over and over and over. It was building up his faith. It was keeping him strong in the faith, and God credited that towards uh, for right, uh, as righteousness. So, um, again, we're supposed to speak those things, be not as though they are. Um, and, and I want to say how that ties into faithfulness. So you think about it, faithfulness, when it comes to God being faithful to us, in Lamentations it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. So he is ever faithful to us. Never stops. We don't have to even question that side of the equation. The side we have to question is our faithfulness to him. So if faith is the measure of trust that we have in God, Faithfulness is the measure of trust that God can have in us. So we need to check up on our faithfulness to God, okay? How, how much can God trust you? By being faithful to the little things, going to church, your job, your family. Um, you know what? Uh, being faithful with uh, what you've been given, the money you have. Are you good stewards with what you have? You know, are you, hel- are you good at school? You know, we talk about school. Do you do your homework? Okay, so we're supposed to be faithful, and when we're faithful with little, God will promote us and make us faithful with much. It's so important to be faithful because with, with faithfulness, again, when, we, when we're faithful, there's not just a reward to that. There's, there's uh, being faithful to read God's word, being faithful to his presence. It builds us up and keeps us strong. And this day and age, more than ever, it is ever important. Why? Because the enemy is out to destroy us. And not just destroy us. He is wanting to wipe out a young generation. It only takes one generation to, to change uh, the world in one direction or the other. It really is. We see that all the time. One generation. And we see that when you think about it, when um, Satan was really behind whenever... He's trying to kill, right? Kill, steal, and destroy. That's work of the enemy. So when Pharaoh tried to kill all the babies, Moses survived. But Moses was born and was faithful to God, and God used him mightily. Satan was trying to destroy that work. Even with King Herod, notice it was the babies. Again, notice they're always trying to destroy the babies. They're always trying to destroy the kids. But Jesus was still born and was faithful to God to carry out what what he was called to do. And look at what God used for him. So the left today, the left ideology, is trying to kill all the babies. Isn't that interesting? We see the same pattern. Nothing new is under the sun. Satan doesn't have any new tricks. It's all the same tricks. He's trying to kill the children. You were still born. So you young kids, are you faithful to God? Are you faithful to God? Because Satan is out to destroy you you guys first. Because you're, you're susceptible, you're vulnerable. That's why he tries to kill the little children. But when you grow up, so as you guys grow up, mature in the Lord. Be strong. Be strong for your friends. Be strong for your family. Be strong for those around you. Because as you're faithful, it helps strengthen your faith. And when your faith is strengthened, we see God do awesome and mighty things in the Bible. By faith, Noah built the ark before it ever rained. It didn't even rain yet, ever in history. By faith, Joseph stored up the grain before the famine ever hit. By faith, Moses stretched out his hand and the Red Sea parted. Even though that was God's power at work, it didn't happen until he stretched out his hand and the sea part. By faith, David picked up five smooth stones, even as a young boy, and slayed Goliath the giant. And by faith, Jesus willingly laid down his life for yours. You know, we see that correlation between speaking God's word, believing. We see that all throughout, especially the New Testament, but we see that all throughout the Bible. But it's such an important thing when it comes to our salvation. Romans 10, 9 to 10, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. They go hand in hand. We believe, we trust, but we have to act. We have to speak. We have to have the corresponding action or the faith dies. We're not to be hearers only of the word. We're supposed to be doers of the word. 
So try to exercise this all, and I'm just trying to push all of us to do better, myself included. Let's not just get the word of God inside of us. Let's do something with it, okay? And I believe, was Levi, the Levi supposed to pray? Was he? Is he supposed to pray? If Levi's ready. Well, let's just give Royce and Lois and everybody a hand for a good job. <laughs> Amen. I just thought that it, something different, and we had a, had a good time. The Word of God was presented in such a good way. Amen. Just awesome. So thank you all. And this um, Pastor Patsy has been working really hard, and some of the other ladies. What? What's that? Yeah, we're going to pray. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to pray. So I'm just talking about the snacks first. I'm not going to dismiss yet. Okay. So I'm just saying that um, Pastor Patsy's been working really hard on the snacks and the other ladies too. So it's going to be good, but we're going to pray first over that. But when you go in, I want you to stay in your groups. Because we tend to go with people that we're familiar with. And we sit with the same people. We sit in the same chairs with the same people do the same thing, don't we? So it's good to try to sit by people that you don't normally sit by because you get to know them, okay? And we don't get a chance to sit with the young people that often. So that's why we have these special intergenerational times so that we can get to know some of these young people. And they got a lot of good things to tell you too. And that's why I enjoyed going on the van rides back from the camp because I got to hear a lot. And I got to learn, I didn't know, Leslie, did, he, he's learning to, he's just watching Star Wars for the first time in his life. How far have you gotten now? Not any farther than last time. Okay. Because <laughs> school's starting, you're busy now, right? But I was just like, hey, we had something we could talk about, the, th the, the four of us could talk about Star Wars the whole time. <laughs> it was fun. I enjoyed, I still remember that conversation because it was fun. We enjoyed it. So that's just have a good conversation. Get to know these, these young people. We just love them so very much. Amen? So, yes, Levi, would you please come up and we're going to have you pray. And the microphone. He's got. Before he prays, though, he has something else he wants to share about faith. Okay? <laughs> Pastor John called and said right before our service on Wednesday night, well, we, we're doing this faith service this week. So we were talking about Abraham, weren't we? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the story about Abraham, and we are talking about honoring who? God. And who else? Our parents. Our parents, okay. Honoring our mother and our father. And so it was the story of Abraham, and it was tying how it was telling us how Isaac honored his father, Abraham, by being willing to be the sacrifice that God had asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, right? So we just took it further. We talked about faith then. And we talked about the fact that, that Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son. He had the faith. He had faith in the covenant he had with his father God knowing that if he had to sacrifice his son, he knew God was going to raise him from the dead because that was his seed for all of the stars of the sky, of, his, of, of all of um, his seed that was going to belong to him. And so that's what we did, and we came up with something here. So this is yours, the top one, right? So you tell everybody the name of it. Word faith, it's an acronym. Levi Life Acronym. You all heard my... Um ACTS acronym, right? I'm the best special speaker ever. My acronym My ACTS acronym is After Christ Took Sin. Now, this is faith. Fully anticipating it 
to happen. What you're ampis- anticipating is um, Jesus coming back. Close your eyes, bow your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for sending your only son to die for us. Please bless this food and the hands that made it and sanctify it into our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. I should have asked I should have asked for prayer requests, but I didn't. Yeah, I, I'm the best special speaker ever. So I'm uh, <laughs> donate money to your special speaker. <laughs> this might be my successor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Did you come up with that faith acronym yourself? Oh, you helped. Okay, that was good though. All right, thank you all for coming. We've been prayed. We pray, we prayed for our meals. So just a reminder, if you didn't give offering, make sure you give it to Don Weist. And we're going to go have snacks. Stay in your group, sit together, and fellowship. Okay? That's my um, charge to you. Thank you. We love you all. God bless you. See you Sunday at 1030 a.m.